Hello, everybody. Welcome to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Tonight on the SEC ESPN Network, it's college basketball. The LSU Tigers host Furman. We bring you inside the Maravich Center with former Tulsa Golden Hurricane and NBA and college basketball analyst Victor Howell. I'm Lynn Rollins. This Furman team is in a place it's never been before, 12-0 on the year and nationally ranked and led by Matt Rafferty. He's the number one rebounder and the number one assist producer. And he's also the reigning Southern Conference Player of the Week. 15 points, seven rebounds against Villanova. 13 points, 11 boards in their last game against UNC Wilmington. Just last week as well, named to the Lou Henson watch list. That names the mid-major player of the year. One of the special players for Furman. One of the special players for the home team is Skylar Mays, a 50% shooter and so efficient offensively. I really think he is the X factor and the clue to this L LSU basketball team. He may not get all the headlines, but he should. 14 points in LSU's win in Vegas over St. Mary's. He has nine double-digit scoring games this season. Yes, he can bring highlights like that, but he's also one of the better defenders for Will Wade on the other end of the floor. So we are set to go here. Furman in purple, LSU in white. This Furman team already has a victory on the road against defending national champion Villanova. 24th ranked this week and 12-0 on the year. This should be a good one. Furman has the capacity to score a lot from out court. And they've got a guy who already has had a 54-point game this year. LSU starting Skylar Mays, Javante Smart, Marlon Taylor, Cavell Bigby Williams, and Nas Reed. First possession for the Tigers. This is Reed trying to back in on the smaller defender. Jump hook is good. Great athletic move for Nas Reed, and now I think he should be doing more of that. Use that size and that skill, yet he's got the soft hands for that inside shot. Nice job of powering down and just a jump hook up and in. And Victor Reed is coming alive here the last three games with that made bucket. He's now 17 of his last 30 from the field. He struggled a little bit after those first two games as a Tiger, trying to get used maybe to the speed of the game, trying to find his identity really on the floor. Is it more inside? Is it more outside? But it's great to see that he's getting much more consistent play. And LSU fans, as you just gave the Tiger starting five, you noticed Tremont Waters is not in there. That's not a mistake. He didn't start in Vegas either, but had a really good game. But trying something new here, bringing him in once they get the flow of the game going a little bit. He had 18 points off the bench as Skylar Mays loses it, stolen by Rafferty, and the lay-in is good. Well done by the visiting team as Alex Hunter, the sophomore from Raleigh, North Carolina, knocks it down. Three, three on one, breakaway. Nice job of filling the lanes, and he just launched early for the easy layup. This team will like to play with some pace. They're averaging almost 84 points a game. Taylor crawls that one over the rim, and it drops. Marlon Tabor. Taylor, a junior from Mount Vernon, New York, by way of Panola College. First bucket for him. Boy, and you can see they just don't waste any time. Andrew Brown just steps right into it. One pass, what, about six seconds into the clock, and he just launches it for the three. Andrew Brown is an interesting story. He suffered a stroke in high school, and he's been often injured in college, but he's back healthy now, making his fourth start of this year. Well, you say the stroke. He had a stroke at 16, and you'd think that is, that's unbelievable. He came back from that, and that's the least of his worries, his medical issues, after he had some more. We'll talk more about that as the broadcast goes on. LSU sloppy with the basketball, and that one is blocked and retrieved. About the Stopped hustle. by Javante Smart, Smart after he lost the ball. And Nas Reed has it slapped out of his hands. It will stay with the Tigers. That's great timing from Javante Smart to time this one up as it looked like he was on the breakaway, and you could see the Furman player was trying to line it up, thinking maybe he would draw the foul. Watch the break, and here comes Jordan Lyons. You see him look back. But look at that athleticism from Smart to not make any body contact, use that reach, and pin it against the glass. Jordan Lyons is a guy who had 17 against Villanova, 29 against Western Carolina, and 20 against USC Upstate. LSU has been sloppy on his last couple of possessions. Mounts kicks it into the corner. Contact with Reed, the ball kept by the Paladins. And the jump shot rolls out from 12 feet. That one by Mounts went down and then rattled away. Smart. Dribbling across the key, hands it to Reed with some distance from the bucket. This is Taylor. It's 
Smart tried to get it down to Bigby Williams on the roll, and the Tigers have turned it over four times already. Well, and Bigby Williams needed to roll a little more. He set the high screen. He rolled a little bit, but he needed to roll more and keep going to the basket. That's why Javante Smart threw it there. He was expecting him to keep rolling down the lane towards the bucket, and Bigby Williams stopped short, and the ball went out of bounds. Will Wade was very demonstrative in LSU's shoot-around practice at midday against turnovers. He said, you cannot give the ball back to Furman excessively and expect to win. Well, and that's because this team does not turn the ball over a lot. So any extra possessions you're giving them, more than likely they're not going to give those possessions back to you. Mounts, the sophomore out of Elk in North Carolina, comes up a little bit short with that three-point jumper. Smart, fakes right, dribbles left, stops at the free throw line, misses side iron right, and the defensive rebound pulled off by Mounts. This is Rafferty, a senior from Hinsdale, Illinois, and a kick will give the ball back to the Paladins. One of the more unusual nicknames. It is it's very unique. There's a story behind it. We'll get to it later. P-A-L-A-D-I-N-S, the Paladins. Lions looks inside, instead kicks it out for a corner jumper, and that one's off the back iron by Alex Hunter. Hunter had the open three, but the Paladins missed an easy layup. They had a player roll it down the middle. LSU left him unattended. Another turnover on the carry for Javante Smart. That's five. Smart illegally carried the basketball. Five turnovers already, and the Tigers will reinsert Skyler Mays, who got a brief rest. Darius Days also has returned or come into the lineup for LSU, the freshman out of Raleigh, Florida. The Tigers will be without the services of Daryl Edwards and Marshall Graves tonight. Both will not play due to minor leg and ankle injuries. Bigby Williams over the top does a great job of anticipating that pass and makes the steal without contact. Taylor can't get it to go. Gets it back, working hard, misses off the back iron. Here come the Paladins. Well, that was the pressure of Noah, Noah Gurley using his size on the inside to get that block at 6'8", but 190. Lions for three from the open corner. Won't go offensive rebound taken by Mounts. That was the other thing that Will Wade really emphasized today, rebounding, especially on deep rebounds from three balls. Lions stops, makes a nice pass to Rafferty. He'll try to shoot the hook over Bigby Williams, and no doubt Bigby Williams influenced that shot. Oh, no doubt about it. The size in the middle made him shoot it away from the basket. A couple of nice big plays from Bigby Williams on defense. Mays taking it down the lane, hangs and scores with the left hand. A slick move up and under from the left side. Boy, and the up and under is the emphasis there. Down the middle of the lane, it has his body go one side and then it goes underneath the rim, other way for the reverse. 6-5 LSU by a point, five minutes into the first half. And the ball is taken away. Three turnovers for the Paladins. Mays behind the back, left hand. Oh, look how under control he is, running that break. First you saw the soft hands and the balance with the reverse, and then he comes right back down the floor, takes his time dribbling through two defenders, and gets it up and in. Mays shoots 50% from the floor. There's a steal. He picks it up, and he'll wait for the retinue to catch up. Now he goes left side, and a blocking foul is called. Crew chief Tony Green making the call. Garrett Shannon and Will Howard also are the other officials. Let's take a timeout here as Skyler Mays has ignited LSU's offense in the last 60 seconds. It's 8-5. The Tigers are leading undefeated Furman. There's a look at the LSU huddle on the sideline. Will Wade down on his knees explaining things in his second year at LSU. Sixth season as a Division I head coach. Looking for his 118th victory overall. He's very well associated with the Southern Conference. There you see his record at Chattanooga, 22 and 10. 26 and 9. This was uh, in the second seasons at those two schools. And of course, the chapter to be written this year at LSU in season number two. You know, both of these head coaches are very young. Will Wade in his mid-30s and 
On the other side, Bob Ritchie, maybe a year or two younger than Will Wade. 35 and 11 in his second season there with Furman. Furman picked up 23 wins last year in his rookie campaign. Waters snaking his way inside, leaves it thin off the window. Richie's team one of five so far in this ball game from deep, a team that has no problem launching them. 46 three-point attempts in their last ball game. And a quick three taken from just to the right of the key. Yes, sir. And that looked like a holding foul of some sort. He was on the breakaway. On the breakaway probably would have led to an easy dunk for Emmett Williams. The pass was going to him, but he got pulled back from Noah Gurley. Watch on the break. You're seeing four is going to grab at him, pulls him back. They call him for the foul. Ten yards assessed for the penalty. We play the down. Waters scored 18 off the bench in his last game. This is only the third time in his still brief career at LSU that he has not started a game. And a loose ball foul is called on LSU. That one is assessed against Darius Days. Nice drive there by Nas Reed and just couldn't get the ball to go in. Had the momentum taking him towards the glass. Tried to lay it up from a few feet away and just shot it too hard. Waters leads the Southeastern Conference in steals as he's working on Hunter. Rafferty guarded by Reed. Six to shoot. Rafferty fakes, gets caught up and is tripped. And they're gonna call a foul even though Rafferty may have initiated that contact. He got out of control. There was contact, a blocking foul is called. And they're gonna get Reed. Let's take a look on the drive. You see Reed's trying to shadow him down there. If anything, they called Reed for maybe sticking out the leg, but it looked like by that point he had already been passed. Reed was trying to shuffle his feet and go along with him, and in fact, just never had a chance to cut him off. Rafferty came around, looked like he had already passed Nas Reed to make his move, and Reed stopped. He went to the ground, they called Reed for, for the hip check, and you see he's cut there on his right shoulder, looks like he has two scrapes. So Andrew Brown returns to the lineup. Paladins were out of sync with that offensive I think, I think, possession. I think Brown tried to throw it up there. He was losing his balance, maybe trying to get a call. There was, was still plenty of time on the shot yeah. clock. He was falling out of bounds. He tried to take a shot and maybe get a call for a foul. Waters pulls back and scores. Boy, he's so quick when he can stop on a dime like that. It looks like he's taking his momentum to the basket, going to try to drive you all the way. He hits the brakes. They fly right by. He's able to pull up for that easy little jump shot. Tremont is averaging nearly 12 points a game. Hunter drills the three. That's his first three-pointer. He shoots it at 38% clip, 4-7 in his last game from deep. LSU by two. Mays. Is cut off, gets it over to Waters, a long three, got it. Waters has five points, that's his 16th triple of the year. He's second on the club behind Skyler Mays, who has 22. Just drifted out to the wing, got the ball from Mays, top of the key for an easy shot. Open look. Clark for three over Mays. Yes, Trey Clark living up to his first name. And that's just his sixth make of the season from deep. In fact, he's 50% now, six of 12 on the season. Nas Reed with that high dribble, and he's susceptible when he makes that high dribble and tries to back in when there is weak side help. Sometimes he dribbles into trouble. Gotta keep that dribble just a little lower, or just slow it down half a pace. 13-11, LSU leading 11.43 to play in the first half in front of a big crowd in Baton Rouge. There's young Bob Ritchie in his second season as head coach at Furman. He was an assistant at Furman for six years. 
before leading the team to a 23 and 10 record a year ago, 13 and 5 in the Southern Conference. And they had 22 wins during the regular season. That was a Furman record, Victor. So in his first year, he coached Furman to a record number of regular season wins at 22. And now he has his team sitting at 12-0, and, and that's the first 12-0 and start in the Southern Conference. You got to go back to 63-64 season when Davidson started the season as well as Bob Rich's team has started this season. Skyler Mays has a couple of buckets for LSU in the first half to ignite the offense. Let's go back and look in the rearview mirror at him doing some slick work around the bucket. Oh, this is such an impressive shot. Look how he went up and under, brought his arm across his body for that reverse layup. And then here, turning defense to offense. Calm with the dribble, behind the back. Boys, the contact, gets it off the glass as well. Turning a steal into some points. I tell you, he, he's such a smooth operator. He's two for two tonight. Shooting a little better than 50% from the floor. That comes up a little bit short. Andrew Brown couldn't get it to crawl over the rim. Furman still just two points off of LSU turnovers. Right now, the Tigers getting a big break. But the Paladins are not converting on the fact that they've coughed it up six times already. That's rejected out of the hands of Smart. It's on the floor. And tied up, it will stay with LSU. So far, the Paladins have nothing from Jordan Lyons. A junior out of Peachtree City, Georgia. He's the guy who had 15 trays in one game to tie an NCAA Division I record and 54 points in a game earlier this year. That's the most in Division I basketball since 2009. Mays again, he's three for three. That was well done by LSU very patiently. And Emmett Williams set the screen. Skyler goes shoulder to shoulder right off the screen, gets him open on the block for the easy two. Williams sets the pick. Nice feed across the lane, but LSU gets some defenders there. Brown snakes loose and scores with the left hand. Well, with Jalen Williams posting up on the other block, it forced Nas Reed to make a decision, go ball or stay man. And once he made the move, thinking the pass was going to the block, made it open lane for the layup. Brown, in addition to fighting his way back from that stroke in high school, had hernia surgery, it became infected. And he was very precarious in his recovery for a couple of weeks in the hospital. And he has sprained an ankle. And finally, he's healthy, both internally and externally. Yeah, his, his intestines were accidentally cut in that surgery you're talking about. It was life-threatening. But he was able to recover from that miraculously. Got himself back into basketball shape. Victor, look at that uh, fact. The first game against a ranked opponent at home in December since December of 2006, a dozen years ago. And that was prior, obviously, to the Aggies joining the SEC. By the way, Reed now with two fouls, and he's on the bench. Hey! And a foul will be called against Cavell Bigby Williams. That's his first. Well, Rafferty put him in a bad spot. He was able to back him down to where Bigby Williams gets right under the rim. Take a look. It's only two dribbles, but he backs down Bigby Williams to right near under the rim. So once he spins to make his move, Bigby Williams had nowhere to go. So trying to reach over to draw the foul, you could tell the body contact was coming. Rafferty now bandaged from that dual scrape on his right arm, misses the free throw. And you notice the arm sleeve is off too. He had a sleeve on there. Rafferty had 17 rebounds and 15 points in an upset victory at Villanova earlier this year. It's amazing, this guy's a 6'8 senior. Very rarely, Victor, do you find a fellow who leads his team in rebounding and assists. One thing we've learned about this team, they don't really have a problem with whoever's doing the scoring. They pass the ball around. If you're getting the rebounds, great. But if you've got the hot hand, we're going to get you the ball as well. You can lead both categories. If not, it's okay. They've got plenty of support. Mays is fouled on his way to the rim. We've got a lot of upperclassmen that start this game, really go about six or seven deep. And then after that, it really shifts to a lot of young players on this Furman team. So about a handful, maybe six of the players that are really shouldering the majority of the minutes.
Brown clears the defensive rebound. Lions dribbles all the way from one corner to the other, now reverses. This for three, comes up a little bit short from Alex Hunter. Nine and a half to play, first half. LSU by one. Oh. Big B Williams was a little late getting that ball up over the rim, but then was fouled as he retrieved his own miss. Yeah, go take a look at this pass. Waters off the screen, and Bigby Williams is coming from the upper right of your screen. Here it comes, and that pass is a little higher. He gets it up and over the rim. The pass is just a little low, but he can leap so high. It's almost like he passed up where the ball was going and put it below the rim and wasn't able to get it up and over. Clay Mounts committed the foul. That's his second. Bigby Williams is looking for his first point tonight, a 64% free throw shooter. Well, that'll be big if, for the Tigers if Furman has to sit mounts for much, if not all, of this first half if he's in foul trouble. 26 points in their last ball game. He's averaging 13 a game. LSU comes away with it. That one taken out of the pile by Emmett Williams. Mays loops it up, he scores again. Score he has been acrobatic. And doesn't it just seem like when you're watching the games in slow motion, two just long gliding steps, but it got him to where he wanted to go, and then with the up and on. Lions kicks it to the wing for an open three. No good by Gurley. Gurley did not play in the last game as he was oh. hey. on the bench for disciplinary reasons, and the follow-up is good by Marlon Taylor. He is a tremendous leaper. Had 15 against Southeastern Louisiana and 15 against Houston. He cleaned up the first Mays miss of the night. LSU by five. This is the biggest lead for the Tigers. Lions. Stepped on the end line. I think he thought about taking the three, and then he realized if he could throw a fake, he tried to go baseline, and the Tigers collapsed on him. He ran out of room. Five turnovers now for Furman. And LSU had six about four minutes ago, and they're still sitting on six. So they've done a nice job now. In fact, their last turnover was the Nas Reed turnover going into that last timeout. Waters left that lob short, intended for Bigby Williams. Lions for three. This is the guy who had 15 three-pointers in one game earlier this year and route to a 54-point performance. But nothing tonight. Waters scooping, leaving it thin off the window for the second time. That one's punched loose by Bigby Williams, but LSU cannot control. Well, then Brown right after on that, the run. It was Alex Hunter that came back and punched it out of the hands of Waters. Lions finally finds the bottom of the net, his first three-pointer. He's got 50 trays this year. Well, look, 50. 100 and coming into tonight's game, 141 of his 198 field goal attempts were from behind the three-point line. So he either sees an open lane and drives it to the basket, or he's shooting from 20 plus feet. for Emmett Williams, and he'll shoot a free throw. Nice job of muscling that one up there. Battle on the inside, drew the contact, and was able to force it up there off the glass and get the roll. Let's look at some more work by Skyler Mays. He's got eight points in the first half. LSU 21, Furman 17 from Baton Rouge. 7-11 remains in the first half here in the Maravich Center. LSU 21-17. Over Furman, Victor Howell and Rollins with you. We are delighted to be here for this holiday version of a wonderful basketball game. And really anticipating this ball game as LSU's had a very important string. A tough loss at Houston, a big win out in Vegas against St. Mary's. Here comes a top 25 ranked Furman team tonight. Conference play is right around the corner. It's been a great pace so far. And you can see Furman really likes to try to launch them up from the outside. Where does LSU have the biggest advantage so far? In the paint. 16 to 4 advantage Tigers near the basket. And the Tigers will be shooting free throws right now with Emmett Williams at the line. The freshman from Fort Myers, Florida. He uses the rim and the backboard and completes the old fashioned three point play. 22-17, LSU has matched its biggest lead. 
A little more than seven minutes remaining in the first half. LSU shooting better than 50% from the floor. Furman at six for 20 now after that miss. Well, you saw Matt Rafferty did all that work to try to back Big Big Williams in, and then when he did... <laughs> LSU's been trying to get that lob going and has misfired a couple of times, not on that occasion. Special delivery down the baseline. Marlon Taylor went right corner and then elevated. That's intercepted underneath by Emmett Williams. LSU's defense right now just not allowing Furman to get into any sort of offensive set. They're struggling to find a rhythm. Furman has been a team that has taken good care of the basketball in most games this year. Waters again tries to find the cutter. Emmett Williams rolling down the left side. Let's go back and look at the big slam by Marlon Taylor. And did you notice on the three dribbles that you just saw in that highlight, did you see where Tremont Waters was looking? He wasn't even looking down the floor. He had his eye to, at, to our left as you're looking at it. His right, he knew exactly where Marlon Taylor was going. He was just waiting to see if he'd have that lane to elevate. And as soon as he saw Taylor take off, Waters did a great job of putting it right on the spot. Remember, this is a Furman team that, aver that averages about 84 points a ball game. They're sitting on 19 right now, so well behind the pace of play that they like. Lions with a nice move for the bucket. Five for him. You know, this Furman team, Victor, has already defeated two of the final four teams from a year ago. Waters faking left, fades and fires, and got it. He crossed the rim. Put Alex Hunter in no man's land with that crossover dribble, just step back for a little more space and hit the jumper. Oh, well, you're right, those big wins are what put Furman on the map here to start the season. None bigger, of course, than the one on the road against Villanova. The average margin of victory this year has been 19 for the Paladins. That's taken away, there was Essentially a collapse by Noah Gurley. He slipped. If nothing else, he slipped because there were defenders right there. That's going to be a tie ball. It looked bad. And the LSU player hit the deck hard. But certainly nothing away from the rules. There you see Bigby Williams get his hand on it, lose it. And here comes the trail. That's Williams coming down the lane as the ball gets caught up there by his shoulders. We saw Gurley just kind of grab it as he had it up there on his shoulder. It was almost like he was carrying a, carrying a package up there on his shoulder. 26-19, LSU leading by seven. We come near the four and a half minute mark remaining in the first half. Look how spread out that Furman offense is too. One purple jersey inside, everybody else outside the three point line. Another floor mistake. Mays tries to dribble right through Lyons. Jordan Lyons takes it away. Well, it's like Lyons had already seen that move once in this game. He anticipated the crossover and stole it. LSU had a bit of a pause in turnovers after a lot early, but now they've got 11. The Tigers with 11 first-half turnovers. Let's see what happens here coming off of the rebound. You see the two Tigers just battling for it. Smart tried to keep it, but it bounced off of Days when he went to go get it. It went off the baseline. Clark down to Rafferty, and he scores with the left hand. First bucket for the senior from Hinsdale, Illinois, averaging 17.2 points, a team leading 9.7 rebounds, and a team leading four and a half assists. Waters uses the high pick. Williams rolls down low, but there's no passing alley. Now Days tries to force it in there. It's tipped away. And a foul is called on LSU, and they're going to get Days. That's his second. We'll step aside here. 339 remaining in the first half. LSU 26, undefeated Furman 21. 
26-21, LSU leading 24th ranked Furman. The Paladins, one of the more unusual nicknames across the country. We go back into the early 60s, Victor, and there were three teams with different nicknames all under the Furman moniker. The baseball team was called the Hornets. The football team was the Hurricane. The basketball team was the Paladins. And they had a student body vote to congeal the nicknames, those three into one. Paladins won it back in 1961. That moniker was originally placed on the basketball team by a sports writer. But can you imagine three different nicknames? Hornets, like Hurricane, and Paladins. And of that, and of that, I like the, uh, I like the choice. I like going with the Paladins. Well, a Paladin is a protector of the throne. It's a knight on a horse. Mythical warriors. See, I was, chivalrous well, heroes. Well, I was prepared for this. I figured you were going to ask me for this. You were going to ask. You were going to bring this up. I've worked with you long enough now. I thought you were going to get me on this one. You know, it's any of the twelve peers of Charlemagne's court. Oh wow! Yeah, the Count Palatine was the, was the chief. Can you name any of the other eleven? That's the question. There was Grumpy. That's where I was going with Dasher, Dancer, Boxer. Snoozy. <laughs> well, she's thinking of Snoozy. Well, she's got to wake up a little bit. They hit a little bit of a drought here. As you mentioned, then those turnovers started picking up here. The offense has gone quiet. Long miss there by Waters. LSU with another chance. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Waters uses the high pick, dumps it down to Williams. Four to shoot now. Smart from the slot, lost his balance. And that turned out to be a lot of work for nothing for LSU. I think he took a glance up at the, at the shot clock there and it looked like he was thrown off, to be quite honest. From where we're sitting, you can hear a countdown. I think the Furman bench was counting down the shot clock, but they added a couple of seconds, so they made it closer to one than what it actually was. He went up for the shot, realized the clock wasn't there. Yeah, they gave themselves a standing ovation. You can see him still laughing about it. I think that's one of the, they're going to say, hey, we got you on that one. This is a one possession game now. Lions, quick release, deep three. Big B Williams clears the rebound. Five of Lions' attempts now from deep, so true to his form. He's only hit one of them. That was his 50th of the year. Seven rebounds for Big B Williams in this first half. He wants the roll. He's got it, and he's hacked as he tried to go up off the feed from Waters. Nice touch by Waters. Considering the distance he had there to get that ball, but he saw him rolling. Big Williams gives you such a big frame. Look at the up and over, and that's the safe thing. Throw it high. You, you've got to be able to trust your teammate to go get it. You know his jumping ability. You bring it down too low, it gives the defense a chance to get their hands on it. So you put it way up there and let Bigby Williams go up and get it. Matt Rafferty committed his second foul. LSU not very good at the free throw line tonight so far. Bigby Williams has missed three of them. The Tigers are one for four at the line. Make it two for five. The Paladins have shot only two free throws, making one. LSU by four. That's poked away from behind by Waters, and a foul is called on Tremont. That's his first. Lost a step going down the lane, but thought he gained a step around that backside to be able to poke it out. Try to lead to a quick transition bucket and call it for hitting him on the elbow. 103 seconds are left in the first half. Lions scoots inside and takes steps as Bigby Williams exactly. came over to close down on the baseline. He's the one that caused it. We've seen him now affect three different shots, three different possessions there. That time Bigby Williams slid over 
made him hit the tracks and he wasn't ready to hit the brakes and wanted to take an extra step. So credit that to big number 11. We've had 21 turnovers in the first half. A dozen by LSU. Big B. Williams catches it and then loses it, and Rafferty picks it up. 13. 13 turnovers for the Tigers. Coming into this season, Will Wade said that he had actually dropped his target number from 13 to 10 because he plays so many guards on the floor at one time. He said, hey, if I've got that many guards, we shouldn't be turning the ball over. Big B. Williams with another rebound. They're sitting on 13 already. Waters with a long three and scores for the defender. That's his second triple of the game. He has both of them for LSU. He's got 17 on the season. See how Bigby Williams just hits him on the wing. He had plenty of distance between himself and the line. Now two of four from deep. Waters with 10 points. Four of eight shooting. Has both of LSU's three-pointers. In fact, he's taken four of LSU's five three-point attempts. Mays has the other attempt that he missed. So the Tigers have creeped back to a seven-point lead. 30 to 23 with less than a minute to play against 24th ranked Furman. Furman is a school with about 2,700 undergraduates, a couple of hundred graduate students, and a school which has very high academic standards. The average GPA is between 3.6 and 3.9 for Furman students. A school founded in 1826 and named for clergyman Richard Furman. It became a secular university in 1992. Rafferty out front. This is Jordan Lyons. LSU not allowing him to penetrate. Waters steals it from Rafferty. Waters behind the back pass, and he threw it right to the defender, Alex Hunter. And, and the question is why? You had the lane with the hesitation dribble and crossover. He had the lane to go to the basket for the layup. He was looking behind him. He saw Big Big Williams, but if he explodes to the basket, he's got a layup or if nothing else, draws the foul. Watch towards the top of your screen. He jumps right into it. He sees the pass coming. Hesitation. Now he goes. You see, he's got him on his hip. He has Lions there. If nothing else, it's a reverse layup and take it. Instead, he tried to leave it behind his back. Winds up being a turnover. Alex Hunter will shoot one and one. He's a very good free throw shooter, although he hasn't been to the line much. But he's now 15 for 17 this year. This young man had 13 points at Villanova in Furman's upset victory of the defending national champions. LSU is likely to take the last shot, 30 to 25, as we close out the first half. Smart, Waters, Mays, Bigby Williams, and Emmett Williams on the floor. Bigby Williams will come up and set the screen. It'll just be up to Waters if he wants to come off of it. Instead, he goes weak side, finds Mays in the corner. And Williams is fouled during the double team. Emmett Williams will shoot free throws. A 73.5% shooter. And Gurley just committed his third foul. A pair of free throws coming for Emmett Williams. Three subs coming in for Furman, and you know with seven seconds to go, they're looking for a quick push, and they'll have all these players spotting up. Unless you see a wide open lane, everybody they just brought in is just three-point shooters. They're going to spread them around the, around the arc and see who gets the open look, if anybody. Yeah, Emmett Williams is having a very solid freshman campaign, averaging... 8.7 points and a team leading 6.9 rebounds. They'll try the two, 
and it's stuck back in by Rafferty after the miss by Jordan Lyons. So Rafferty there to clean it up just ahead of the first half horn. We've got a four-point game in Baton Rouge. The LSU Tigers lead Furman 31 to 27. It's halftime in the Maravich Center. Welcome back to Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Tonight, the LSU Tigers are taking on the 24th ranked Furman Paladins, and it's a four point lead at halftime in the Maravich Center with Victor Howell. I'm Lynn Rollins. Victor, some great holiday basketball here in Baton Rouge, but the spirit of this game goes into the community as for the second straight year, Will Wade's Tiger players have adopted <laughs> Boys and Girls Club members, taken them to target in this case and they've had a whole lot of fun buying christmas presents how about that you grab your favorite tiger you get the shopping cart and you're off to the races go check out the aisles and that's what they did early in the week i'm not sure who had more fun the young kids who were out there being rewarded with it or if it was the actual tigers who were shopping with them in fact skylar mays even said yeah the guy the one i was shopping with went a little over budget but that was okay and they said it was also interesting that not only did the tigers benefit from this and how much they enjoy getting out there but they said they were even moved by how much those who were buying and they were buying for were actually buying for others wanting to share. So you talk about paying it forward, if you will, and they even did on that night. But what a great night as the Tigers all dressed out, got out their shopping carts and helped the kids out there have a great time to pick out something that maybe they wouldn't be able to get or maybe something they've dreamed about and had a chance to look. Look, Will Ray, look, he's scouting that thing right now with the Hot Wheels. Remember the old Hot Wheels? The loop, the loop? Look, having a good time. There's Tremont Waters moving the cart along and <laughs> A, a great thing, yeah, truly, and, and, they, and, and, they and the second time. time that they've done that, uh, uh, and and it really connects the athletes and and youngsters in in the in the community. So, Victor, it's uh, I love to see things like that, and we see so much of it not only at LSU but across the scope of the Southeastern Conference. There is a major mission to get the athletes involved in real life activities. Well, you're putting such a, pop, a public spotlight when you're an athlete, especially in the SEC, all conferences, but we certainly know the power of athletics in the SEC. So to get out in the community, especially this time of year, give up some of your time to spend time with others and you see their smiles on their faces, that's what it's all about. And as we go to break, certainly from Victor and I, a most pleasant and peaceful and joyful holiday season to all of you out there. As we've got basketball here in the Maravich Center, 31-27, LSU is leading at halftime. More in a moment. LSU's lead at halftime is 31 at 27, a four point advantage right now. The Tigers, a couple of times in the first half, had a lead as big as seven. Furman has had one lead that came early at 5 4. Victor Howell, Lynn Rollins with you. There was a time earlier we talked about the efficiency offensively of Skylar Mays. He was that and then some in the first half, four out of five from the floor. Well, it was really the first part of the first half because Mays was shut out in the final eight minutes of the first half. But, boy, when he hit that spurt, that was the first shot that got him going. A beautiful up and under with the cross across his body, reverse layup. And then here driving the lane, turning defense to offense. As you mentioned, four or five from the floor has eight points in the first half. The long strides there and the nice touch up and over all the defenders. But again, he was quiet in the final seven minutes and 37 seconds of this first half. So we saw him hit it in spurts, then he got quiet. But when he did, another one of his teammates stepped up, and that was Tremont Waters. Of course, Waters did not start again tonight. Second straight game, he comes off the bench. Will Wade trying something a little different, but he sees the flow of the game. And then when he enters, he hits the shots. In fact, he has LSU's two three-point field goals, four of eight from the floor, two of four from deep. He has 10 points. He's the only player in double digits. One of the problems, though, he has four turnovers, and that's been a thing that's been a bugaboo with him. Sometimes you get a little too far ahead of yourself to see him hit the three there. LSU has 14 turnovers as a team. Waters has four. Well, those 14 turnovers match the average for a game of LSU this year, so they are turning the ball over much more uh, frequently. Still 54.2% shooting. That eases that turnover problem a bit. Furman is 4 of 16 from deep. Trust me, people, that lumber is going up. They don't mind shooting the three-pointer at all, even if they're not hitting them very well, because they can hit them in spurts. You see the points in the paint. LSU, remember, had a huge advantage, but now it's just 18 to 12 points in the paint. But as we sit at the half, it's LSU on top of Furman, 31-27. An entertaining first half. We expect the same in the second half, and that's coming your way when we come back. We're in Baton Rouge tonight. It's halftime, 31-27. LSU with a four-point lead over undefeated Furman, 12-0 on the year out of the Southern Conference. Victor Howell and Rollins with you here at halftime. 
Victor, let's uh, take a look around the AP Top 20. There are plenty of teams from the Southeastern Conference led by Tennessee at number three this week in the AP Top yeah, 20. Don't be sleeping on the Volunteers. They've had an excellent start to the season right behind Kansas and Duke. And they also find Auburn. Yeah, they had a big game the other night. The Tigers sitting at 9-1 and one on the season and number seven in the country. You see Gonzaga at number eight, North Carolina at nine, and Michigan State rounds out the top ten. As you take a look at 11 through 20, you'll see Mississippi State and Kentucky both there. I tell you what, right now it's big basketball for both of those schools because the women's teams are very highly ranked for both Mississippi State and Kentucky as well as both of those schools finding success. The Bulldogs in at 17. The Wildcats come in at number 19. There are only two other games involving SEC schools tonight. Ole Miss trails Middle Tennessee 36-28 at the half. And Penn State and Alabama just starting. Alabama hosting Penn State tonight. You know, I hear Arizona's a beautiful place this time of year, and the men you see on the screen, that's someone I'm about to find out, including Devin White sitting right there front and center. Nice to see some of the football Tigers out here watching their basketball partners and friends and teammates out here playing tonight as they have finished up, about to wrap up all of their practices, enjoy Christmas, and then it's out west for the Fiesta Bowl. What they a will great be, matchup. They will be departing on December 27th to go to the Fiesta Bowl. You know, let's turn our attention back to basketball here a moment. LSU offensively has had a lot of efficiency. Skylar Mays is one of the reasons, and you see uh, it, this is a little bit difficult to figure, but offensive efficiency is a very, very important number. Right, so so Cody Worsham with the LSU Athletics Department found these stats, and so what you're looking at is the number on the left, the 134.3, the 134.1. What that is telling you is in terms of efficiency as if how many points per 100 possessions that you produce. So Skylar Mays is leading the way for 100 possessions at his rate at 134.3. So you see how efficient Days is, then Cavell, Bigby Williams, and Emmett Williams. The number in the parentheses, what that tells you is that's a percentage of all the possessions that that person has the ball in his hand when that possession ends, either with a made shot, a missed shot, or a turnover. So that means that player's got it. So you can see Mays almost 18%. But how about Cavell Bigby Williams? With the play that he's had and his growth and emergence in the middle, he leads the charge in terms of a player that determines the end of an LSU possession at just a tick over 18%. It's going to be interesting to me, Victor, to see if Furman can get a couple of guys going in the second half. Clay Mounts did not score in the first half. He averages 13 points. Noah Gurley did not score in the first half. He averages nine. And for LSU, Javante Smart, who averages 11, scratched in the first half. So can any of those three or all three or a combination thereof get it going offensively in the second half? Well, this is tied for the lowest first half point total this season for Furman. Obviously, the last time they were at this low of a number, they overcame it one because they're undefeated on the season. But this is much more of a grinded out game. We'll see how they do. LSU's athleticism certainly caused fits for Furman trying to find an offensive to set, but in the last couple of minutes, it was the turnover problem for the Tigers that gave the Paladins some of those opportunities, and they took advantage of it down the stretch. So we're going to see if Furman can carry that momentum over, or does LSU come out and establish in the second half the way they did at the start of the first half? LSU was 13 of 24 from the floor in the first half, but leads only by four because those 14 turnovers negated a lot of that offensive efficiency. So here we go. LSU would also like Nas Reed to get involved offensively. He only took two shots in the first half and made one. LSU in white, the Paladins in purple. Waters with the basketball, gets it to Reed. He's got a height advantage. Jump hook is no good, left it short. He opened the game with a jump hook for a bucket, and he lost that one after he retrieved his own rebound, but it will stay with the Tigers. Exactly how he started the game with a little jump hook for the basket. Fell up short on that one. Got his rebound, but before he could try to take it back up and in, you saw Andrew Brown knock it out. Reed double teamed. That's blocked. He gets it back and rolls it in. And he's got the size advantage on Clay Mounts for sure by about 60 pounds. Powered his way in there and just basically shoved Mounts out of the way to put it back up and in. He's 18 of his last 32 now from the field including two for three tonight. Lions short jumper left it short. I think he was expecting 
some defensive pressure, and Reed cleans it up off the second miss. And once again, it's Big Ben Williams and his athleticism. Lions was right there under the basket, and Big B. Williams caused him to miss that shot, and the Tigers turned it over to a fast-break offense and get the foul. Big B. Williams has had as many as nine blocks in the game this year. That came against Grambling. Mounts committed the foul, and that's his third. So both Mounts and Gurley have three fouls. Mays, swish, his first three-pointer, that's 23 on the year, the most on the LSU roster. He's got 11 points. And we talked about how he went cold for the latter part of eight minutes of the first half there. Brown laid off of him on defense, and Mays just shot it over him. This is LSU's biggest lead, but coming back for a counter three is Andrew Brown. Eight for him, his second triple. Bigby Williams tried to lob it down to Reed. A foul is called on Nas. Bigby Williams almost hit the three-pointer. Accidentally. That's four on Mounts, so no longer, no sooner did you just say that was three on Mounts, he gets his fourth and he now has to leave the game and go back to the bench. I mentioned earlier how key that could be to not have him on the floor. He's averaging 13 a game. Bigby Williams on the receiving end of the slick feed, and Bigby Williams slams it down on the assist by Waters. And Waters did a great job of penetrating through the defense, got to the baseline, and a little wraparound pass. First bucket for Bigby Williams. Mays knocks it loose. Waters picks it up. Two on one opportunity. Waters down to Mays for the two handed flush. LSU rolling now. Offensively, its lead is 10. That's the biggest of the game. And the Paladins want to get off their horse right now with the timeout. This is Waters. You can see Mays looking for it. The two-handed flush, and that gives LSU a 10-point lead with 17.50 to go in the second half. Tremont Waters has been dishing assists early here in the second half. Here's one to Bigby Williams. Well, you saw the explosiveness that he got past Hunter, and then when he draws the help defense, that help defense leaves Bigby Williams. And as soon as he did, it was an easy layoff for Waters to be able to get the nice dunk. And then after that, they get the alley-oop on the fast break. But Sky, uh, Skyler Mays knew this was going to happen around midcourt when it turns defense to offense. Watch how he steps out, gets the slap. Now watch him. Watch how soon he's going to put a finger in the air. Right there. He's at midcourt, and he knows he's got the angle. He can go alley-oop. Tremont Waters doesn't throw it too high, but he throws it right where Mays can run right into it and get the easy dunk. But, Lynn, that goes back to how well those two work with each other. When he made the steal, took two steps and immediately called for an alley-oop, knowing that Waters was going on the other side. These teams have only played each other once before, and that was back in the 1960-61 season. Furman beat LSU in three overtimes. And speaking of overtimes, Furman has had three overtime games already this year among the dozen they've played, and, of course, they've won all of them because they are undefeated through the first 12 games. Mays anticipates the pass, makes the steal. There's a bump and a foul. And this LSU team has turned up the pressure on the perimeter defensively. And we talked about that during halftime, how it was the defensive pressure that caused fits for Furman for the, most, for the majority of the first half. LSU's defense was not letting Furman get into any sort of offensive set, and it wasn't until late when the Paladins took, care of, took advantage of those LSU turnovers to have that little scoring burst. But right now, they just have no offensive organization on their end of the floor. LSU has not turned it over in the second half after 14 of them in the first period. Waters looping it up, can't get it to go, and Nas Reed is fouled as he grabbed the offensive rebound. Boy, Tremont Waters had three hesitation dribbles there, and it was on the last one when he finally 
was able to get a step on the defender. Gets that floater right there. And then LSU with its size at the rim. Look at those two big bodies. Nas Reed and Bigby Williams fighting for the rebound. And the lineup getting the foul for Reed to go to the free throw line. Matt Rafferty committed the foul. That's his third. Rafferty has been held in check tonight. Just two rebounds. Well, you mentioned he's the team's leading rebounder, about 10 a ball game. So he's way behind pace on there. And his scoring's behind pace. He's the leading scorer at 17 a game. And he has five on two of four shooting. Credit LSU's defense. LSU by 11. Rafferty won't shoot it from there. He backs in, looking, makes a nice dish. That's rejected. And LSU gets it back. Waters with the rejection and the steal. And a charge on the other end after Waters got the block shot underneath the basket, goes to the floor. Keeps the possession alive. Let's go back and watch the block by Waters. Underneath the basket on the nice little dish, and Waters comes baseline, catches up with his man, who's Hunter, gets the block, hits the deck, keeps the possession alive. And then you go the other way, trying to turn defense to quick offense, and they call the charge here on Taylor. Waters at 5'11", elevating and scoring. Rafferty See, just tried to loop it up. That's there Bigby was, Williams again. Bigby Williams was there, and he was intimidating. I mean, we've seen that now. He's closing in on a half dozen times. It's just by his 6'11 frame, he's caused the Paladins to have to change their shots or bail on them altogether. Big B. Williams does not shoot open, but when he does, he's very accurate. A 67.4% field goal shooter. Well, he just glided down the lane from the free throw line. Looked like it took him nothing to get to the goal. Lions is bumped and he scores and he'll shoot a free throw. Let's take a timeout right here at the 1542 mark. Watch Bigby Williams put it on the floor, drop step, and he lays it in high off the glass. 43-32 LSU. Mostly every seat in the Maravich Center is occupied tonight. There's a look at some of the members of the LSU Fiesta Bowl bound football team. And Victor with the early signing period just concluded. We take a look at one, two, three, four LSU recruits who are signed, sealed, and delivered among the uh, ESPN top 300 list. Yeah, they did an excellent job in the early signing period. And there's a name on that screen that's very familiar to folks who live in Baton Rouge, Derek Stingley. Listed as a cornerback, he was the standout player at Dunham High School, regarded by many to be the nation's top overall player, and he was a monster on the field as a running back and is scoring one of those two-way players, but officially listed as a cornerback. A, a cornerback. What a nice job by Coach Ed Orgeron and his staff, the incoming class of Tigers, while he's getting his current class set to go out to the bowl game and the Fiesta Bowl. Look at the pictures. Watch Devin White with the smile. Watch how big his smile is. You think those kids are going to remember that picture right there? It's great to see how they just welcome them in, take some pictures. Man, those kids are going to remember that. The only thing better would Buck be this award winner right there. The only thing better would be have Devin White bring his horse in and let him <laughs> oh. let him get up astride that thing. I saw the video of him. It's Miss Daisy, right? He's a horseman. Yeah. Lions had, had a chance to trot around the LSU campus. They actually let that horse take a stroll around. Uh, Tiger Stadium. Yep. So the grass is a little greener down on the goal line <laughs> next year. You'll know why. 43-33. Reed puts it on the floor, kicks it to Waters. Nice ball movement, and the bucket is good by Reed. That's one of the more efficient, crisp execution plays by LSU offensively. The pass inside by Tremont Waters was great. It was the second pass that went from Williams to Reed was even better. Hunter for three. Uh-uh. Taylor rebounds. LSU by a dozen here with the ball. Five minutes into the second half. Tigers in this half are six for nine from the field. 
Herman is two for seven. Shot clock at six. Waters on line, but a little bit short. He just came from a possession where he had such crisp passing all the way around, and that time it was a lot of dribbling and standing. Lions hits that jumper from the key. 12 points for the 5'11 junior from Peachtree City, Georgia. If you missed it when we mentioned it earlier, he had 54 points against North Greenville. The most points in a Division I game since 2009. And he also had 15 threes in that game. Mays tries to cut him off. This for three. Unguarded, it rattles in. That one knocked down by Noah Gurley. That's his first bucket. Well, Wade's going to want to talk about this now. It's a little bit of a run here by Furman. He wants to get his team settled down. And, and Victor, you've mentioned it before. Even though LSU, at times in this game, has seemed as though it's in a comfortable position. You cannot get comfortable against Furman. No, and you just went from a very good offensive set to the one that wasn't so good. Winds up being just one missed shot, no offensive rebound, and Furman goes and takes advantage. And as we mentioned, they had 16 three-point attempts in the first half, only hit four, and we told you, don't think that's going to slow down. This is a team that's going to shoot it and then shoot it some more. They've got a lot of sharpshooters from the outside. It only takes a couple to start getting hot, and the score can change real quick. So Will Wade just wanted to settle this team down, make sure that they're thinking on offense in the right position, but more importantly, they have to know where they are on defense, guarding the three-pointer has been a little bit of a problem for LSU this year. And Will Wade will admit it. He knows his team has had to improve on three-point defense. And with this team, the way they like to spread you out, he needs to make sure his team is ready to go. The Tigers by seven with the possession. Mays with a nice entry down to Williams. It rattles and falls. Just fundamentals, too. Skyler Mays, what a great bounce pass. Tough angle, spin it into him where he's got position. Feed him to where he has the defender on his backside. Don't force him to go get it. And puts it up and in. Uh-oh. Look out now. Jordan Lyons hits a second three-pointer. We told you coming into this ball game, 141 of his 198 field goal attempts were three-pointers. He's got 51 trays on the year now, two tonight. And this is she really working the ball inside nicely. And that's where they have such an advantage tonight. It's now 12-2 advantage LSU in the paint in this half. Furman closed the first half on an 8-2 paint point run because they were using those turnovers and rushing the, fee, uh, rushing the court and getting those fast break layups. But now LSU 12-2 in the paint here in the first seven and a half minutes of the second half. A second chance, Mays deflects that one out of the hands of Lyons. LSU gives it back though. Rafferty at the top, Brown for three. On the money and here comes Furman. And you see how fast they do it, it takes them no time to launch. You miss two, it looks like LSU has the rebound. Furman forces a steal and then Brown launches. Go back and take a look at what Andrew Brown just did, the 6'5 senior guard out of Traveler's Rest. South Carolina steps right into it. No defender out there. Now coming into this game, his 20, he, had shown, he only shot 29 field goal attempts, but 21 of 29 were from deep. So Furman's starting to flex its long-range muscles. 49-44. Furman within five. We'll be back in a moment with 12-24 to go in the game. We've got more basketball for you following Christmas. The LSU Tigers women's team takes on Southeastern right here on the SEC ESPN Network. It starts at 6.30 here in Baton Rouge, two days after Christmas. We hope you'll join us for that. Big win for the Lady Tigers just last night, in fact. 24 hours ago, they had crossed the Atchafalaya Basin and went to UL Lafayette. Sluggish start, but a strong second half for the Lady Tigers, and Nikki Fargus' group gets the win. Jalen Cherry, the leading scorer for LSU. This is, an, is an, an important possession for the Tigers. The lead, which was a dozen while ago, is now five. Mays misses the outside shot. Here comes Furman. 
That was rushed a bit by Jordan Lyons. Yep, that was from five feet. He's more comfortable from 25. Reed at the top, hands it off to Waters. Back to Reed. Nice pass over Rafferty for his flush. It's now 34 paint points for LSU. They have a 20-point advantage of scoring in the paint. 34-14. Reed has seven in the second half. He's got nine on the game. Waters got a hand on that. He hurdles the hunt Hunter down with the ball on the court. Hunter comes up and fires in and out. Rafferty goes down. This will be a foul on Reed. And Reed, Reed goes down. That's the third foul on Reed. Here's Reed offensively. Look, a little bit of a no-look pass from Tremont Waters. Now it has Reed. Knows exactly what to do with it when he's that close. Flushes it down for the easy two. Points 33 and 34 for LSU in the pain where they've just been dominant tonight. Brown with a quick release and he wedges it. The possession will stay with Furman though. So it's treated just like a tie ball. And the possession arrow favored the visiting team. Brown off the fingertips of Rafferty. That was ever so close. Rafferty was trying to back down and almost took himself out of the play. He could not quite grab it. That's 13 turnovers for Furman. They came into this game averaging 11. We were talking to some of the Furman officials, coaches earlier, and asking them about trends and what to watch for. And they said one of the things that will give them some concern is if they start turning the ball over a lot because that's something that they usually don't do and have not done a lot of in their first 12 games. And LSU already has forced 13. Smart and Waters, Bigby Williams, Taylor, and Days are on the floor for the Tigers after the last substitution by Will Wade. Gurley, Brown, Hunter, Lyons, and Rafferty for the Paladins. Rafferty right now 12 points below his season average. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's too late for him to get started, but time's a ticking. LSU's done a nice job of taking him out of his game. Taylor goes baseline, elevates, and stuffs it over the defender. Oh, that was a special delivery to Noah Gurley. Baseline in his mug. This is the season of giving, and he just gave him a half face full. Yikes. Most of us couldn't jump like that off a trampoline. Brown works hard underneath, and he's fouled up. Let's go back and watch this one on the baseline. One quick step, and he gets past Andrew Brown, and here comes the help defense, and Noah Gurley, oh, baby. He decided not to come over enough because here comes Marlon Taylor and put one right on his grill. See, he's got eight points tonight. Made his first start in the last game for LSU. That was the game out in Vegas against St. Mary's. What a highlight play there. Brown is looking for his 13th point. He's making his fourth start tonight. Well, he's trying to make up for what Matt Rafferty is not producing because he came in averaging just over eight points a game. So he's well above his average, while Rafferty's well below his average. Days hands it off to Taylor. This is smart. Waters from way back. Missed it short. Bigby Williams again. Didn't get the block shot, but his presence and his long reach forced Alex Hunter to alter that layup. And how about that? He runs down the floor and gets the bucket. How about some end-to-end -end action from Bigby Williams? He's a 6'11 senior, and he runs the floor exceedingly well for a big guy. 
Rafferty's pass is behind the cutter. Here comes LSU on the run. Waters, late feed. It's deflected, and who touched it last? The Paladins did. Brown is going to get a bit of a rest, and Trey Clark, who had a triple in the first half, comes back in the game for Furman. Boy, those are the kind of plays that when you go over game film and Furman takes a look at that last possession, that's going to get somebody's attention, and they're not going to like it. You see a big man on the center alter a shot at the rim, and then he beats you down the floor and gets the bucket at the other rim. Tipped in by Bigby Williams. I don't think he's missed a shot tonight. No, he hasn't. He's four for four from the floor. That's going to put him about 70% in field goal accuracy. Rafferty working against Williams. Nicely done. Well, that time he was able to power it up. Bigby Williams kept the position. He was right there. That's just a tough shot from a senior, and Matt Rafferty got it up and under. Rafferty is still 10 points below his season's average of 17. Eight and a half to play, 57-48 LSU. Water sneaks inside and scores with the left hand. Boy, did he just change directions on a dime? That's his first bucket after 10 first half points. Another turnover. Boy, Tremont Waters was like a cheat code in a video game the way he changed directions on that last possession. A set play for the Tigers as he comes around the curl and then just went from right to left so fast and left the defense in the tracks. Watch this. Right side and then bang. Look, at he just leaves him standing there. Rafferty's just standing there reaching, and then he goes up and under with a nice reverse touch. Boy, it all started when he planted that foot and completely changed direction that just froze the Furman defense. 12 points for Waters on five of 13 shooting, six assists. LSU by 11, eight minutes to play. Nice response by LSU after Furman made that run. Well, they cut it to, I think, four. Mays dribbles into a double team. Taylor picks it up and misses. And the follow is good. Darius Days. Darius Days, the freshman from Raleigh, Florida. First bucket. That rolls in from about six feet. That is Trey Clark, his second bucket. He's got five points, one hoop in each half. LSU starting to close in on 50 paint points. And a traveling whistle is blown against Javante Smart. Let's take a timeout with LSU leading 61 to 50. 7.05 remains in the game. LSU over Furman in Baton Rouge. 7.05 to go in the second half. LSU holding on to an 11 point lead, 61 to 50 over Furman. As we welcome you back to the Maravich Assembly Center. Lynn, a couple of interesting connections between Furman and LSU. One of them actually doesn't involve the sport we're calling, but a sport that you already called postseason action for. That would be soccer. Soccer. Brian Lee, the head coach for LSU's women's soccer team, was an outstanding soccer player at Furman. Led Furman to three regular season titles and two tournament titles. The other interesting connection is the one that I really enjoy. Frank Selvey back in the day for Furman had the highest scoring average in the NCAAs mm -hmm. at 41.7 points per game. Do you know who took over the reins? Oh, no doubt, Pete Maravich. Absolutely. How about that? It was a former, former, former paladin in Frank Selvey who averaged 41.7, and he held that record until Pistol Pete arrived in Baton Rouge and averaged 44.5 in a record that still stands, and boy, oh boy, if and, we could and see will him. never be broken. Never. And if we could see him play with that three-point line, my, oh, my. 
There is still time for Furman to attack LSU, but with 7.05 remaining and an 11-point deficit, every possession becomes more important for the Paladins. They have won 12 consecutive games. Rafferty looking inside, trying to back down the defender. Big B. Williams is guarding him. It'll stay with the people in purple tonight. Eleven on the shot clock. Brown throws it in to Hunter. Two on the shot clock. That's good from three-point range just ahead of the horn. Knocked down by Alex Hunter. That's his first bucket in the second half. He's got ten points. Big B. Williams from about eight. Misses Mays trying to work inside after the rebound by Days. That's great patience by Mays too. He had an open three pointer that he would have taken, but no need. He can use a little more clock, look for an opportunity. He wanted to put the ball on the floor. He gets a foul called. Tremont Waters replaces Javante Smart for the Tigers. Smart has not scored in this game. He's not been held scoreless this year. Well, he's coming off a game where he struggled, too, out in Vegas. He was one for eight from the floor, just two points. Clearly his worst offensive outing of the season to date. But, yeah, he struggled tonight. Had a couple of early turnovers. Sort of took him out of his game. He has four of those. He's over four from the floor and has four turnovers. Shot clock at five. Big B. Williams is fouled. Three feet from the rim. LSU goes on to win this game. This is where they're winning it. They have just been pounding Furman all night long in the paint. And Clay Mounts has fouled out with no points. This is a guy averaging nearly 13 in a game and almost seven rebounds. And he was shut out in the scoring ledger tonight. And fouls out with 5.53 to go. And, and not just that, but you go a little deeper. In his last three games, Clay Mounts was 16 of 22 from the floor. So shooting red hot and averaging, as you mentioned, was 13 the game. And tonight he's 0 for 2. Two field goal attempts. One of them was a three-pointer and five fouls. Ten points for Big B. Williams, nine of them in this half. And he'll go to the bench right now. Substitute one big for another. Nas big Reed re-enters the game. Yep. Reed, Waters, Mays, Taylor, and Days on the floor for LSU. Nas Reed and Bigby Williams combined have 16 rebounds. Furman as a team has 19. Rafferty, Lyons, Hunter, Brown, and Gurley in the game right now for Furman. LSU by nine. It can take a double-digit lead with this possession. Shot clock at three. Once again, not the best of possessions for LSU. The struggle towards the latter part of the end of the first half. Got a little bit of offensive sink. They don't want to do that tonight here in the final five minutes of the second half. Days grabs the rebound and Rafferty pushes Waters from behind and commits his fourth foul. Waters just kind of divided that one. He had the dribble and got right in front of him and just slowed the pace. And Rafferty had his foot on the pedal, never slowed down, and literally ran right up his back. Watch. Waters is controlling the dribble. He sees the man there and just sort of slows down and comes to a stop, and Rafferty never does. <laughs> just trucks him over. One thing, Lynn, as you mentioned earlier, and talked about the overtime wins, this Furman team, when they've gotten to a team that they're supposed to beat and beat handily, they've done just that. But then they've also gotten in some games where they've been tested and had those three overtime games, and they won all of those. So they can show you that they can win the blowouts, but they've won the tough fought ones, hard fought ones there when it's gone down to the wire. But they've got a little work to do if they want to try to pull this one off with five minutes to go. 
This for an 11 point lead by Waters, who's a 75% free throw shooter. And he snares both of them. Gurley for three. Long off the window. And an easy deep rebound for Reed. And that was an emphasis for LSU, too. Pay attention to that rebounding, especially on the long missed threes. And they've done a nice job with it tonight. Offensive foul, Nas Reed. Calling for dipping his shoulder. That's his fourth. Yeah, he's raising his hands and he's frustrated. But when he bends down low like that and with that big frame of his, he's controlling the dribble. He's trying to back his defender down. But when he gets down low and then explodes out of that dribble, that shoulder comes into him. That's what they call him for. He'll go to the bench and Big B Williams replaces him with 4.17 to go. LSU 64, Furman 53. This is one thing LSU does not want to do, and that send Furman to the free throw line with opportunities to score with the clock stopped. That's the sixth team foul. Rafferty. Rafferty's had a tough night. He has worked as hard as he can, but he's been overmatched at times. He's a very good player for Furman. Not just nine points so far tonight for Rafael, four of seven shooting. Told you coming in, he's the reigning Southern Conference Player of the Week. And LSU has made him work for everything. Once again, down to the final seconds of the shot clock. Waters the fadeaway. Offensive rebound and the final flush. From Darius Days. Well, that cleaned up a bad possession for say, the Tigers. I was going to say the exact same thing. That bailed him out. A floating three-pointer with two on the clock, but Days gets it, and now a cheap foul. Bigby Williams called for the foul. Three eighteen to go. LSU trying to hand firm in its first defeat of the season. Waters shoots the fadeaway three. Look at the work here by Darius Days. Down the stretch we go, 318 to go. As we take a look at Furman's upcoming schedule, and interesting that upcoming for them is East Tennessee State. That's a conference game. And Lynn, if you notice in their, their record, they're 12-0, but they're already 1-0 in the Southern Conference. We talked to some of their officials and said, why do you play a conference game so early? Well, the Southern Conference plays its tournament a week before the SEC. And they said the coaches got together and said down the stretch of the season, they were playing five games in eight nights or six games in nine nights. It was too much. So they agreed to play one conference game at the beginning of December and one conference game at the end of December. So this is Furman's last non-conference game. Then they get into it in the Southern Conference on the road at East Tennessee State before they face Mercer. And then you see at the bottom there, January 12th, a big one against UNC Greensboro, a team that was picked it pick to win their conference. You and I talked earlier, you mentioned about the double overtime game. That was their conference game against Western Carolina with the double OT, but that's why they now tried to space it out a little bit because they felt like they were wearing their guys down at the end of the season, playing too many games in too short of a time frame. They also have an 18 game schedule in the Southern Conference as Rafferty misses the free throw. The Citadel, Wofford, Chattanooga, UNCG, Samford, East Tennessee, VMI, Mercer, and Western Carolina in the SOCON along with Furman in basketball. Boy, you don't see that too often. Nope. How about Noah Gurley getting a block on a tip in? Nas Reed was right at the rim and he was able to get up and block that shot. Rafferty, nice offensive rebound. Boy, he works hard. Boy, Been tough is. sledding tonight for him and a few others for Furman, but uh, they come and hate. They play with grit. 
Dude, we mentioned the top of the broadcast about not only does it give you offensive effort, but on defense. Skyler May slipping in and stealing that pass. Waters slipping to the bucket and lays it in. That exact play has worked for LSU three or four times easily here in the second half. 15, make it 16 for Waters. A long three by Lyons comes up short. Rebound taken off by Nas Reed. Just not there tonight for Furman from long range. Nine of 30 from deep. Team shooting almost 37% on the season. Shooting 30 tonight. They just have not been able to find it long range. Shot clock at seven. Mays fakes right, takes an unguarded three, and drills it. Skyler Mays. 16 points, eight in each half, averaging 13.3, and two threes tonight, including this one, which gives him a team-leading 24. Look at just a simple ball fake, trying to see what the defender's going to do. Does he overcommit? Doesn't go to the screen, dribbles once away from it, and winds up putting it in for the shot. We spoke with some admiration earlier in the game about the offensive efficiency of Mays, shooting 50% from the floor coming into the game, 42% plus from three-point range. Tonight, he's seven for 10 from the floor, so he'll be above 50% after this game. And how about this? You talk about that offensive efficiency and go to the other end of the stat line. LSU has 10 steals, he has four of them. So contributing on the defensive side as well as what he's giving you on the offensive end. 16 points on seven of 10, three assists, four steals in 34 minutes of action for Mays. Count the bucket, give it to Andrew Brown. Taylor called for the goal 10. Lead pass right to the basket. There's that athleticism, but you can see clearly off the backboard. Taylor has to duck before he hit on the rim. Minute 23 away from seeing one of the last few remaining undefeated teams fall tonight. It'll be another big win for LSU. Waters took a blow to the head, and he'll shoot a free throw. Or two at the other end. 122 to play, 71 57. There's Bob Ritchie watching on. This is the first time he's seen his team absorb a defeat. Furman will no doubt be a huge factor in the SOCON. This is a team that's well built. It's got talent and versatility and is well coached. Oh, very well coached, yeah. And we've seen two of the top four teams picked in that conference come rolling through Baton Rouge. Remember, it was the second game of the season when UNC Greensboro came to the Maverick Assembly Center. That one was much more high scoring, one that LSU won 97 to 91. They're picked to win the conference. Waters with yet another steal, and he lays it in. Soldier Furman's picked fourth in that conference. But they really ride about five or six players, maybe seven max, because once they get more into the bench, it's such young players. So Bob Ritchie asks a lot from just a handful of players with the experience. Mays with the rebound. Waters, who got the last bucket for LSU, has 10 points in each half. Well, short of that spurt towards the latter part of the first half when LSU got a little sloppy with some of those turnovers and allowed Furman to make a run. This has been a very, very good game for the Tigers tonight. To your point, only three second-half turnovers for LSU after 14 in the first half. Hey, Bill. Bigby Williams left it short, and the shot clock expires. 28 seconds to go. And LSU... No We'll get into the win column tonight. No way, wasn't worried about that because all it did was take all 30 seconds off the clock. 
Mays was anticipating Lions going from three point and why, why not? That's 80% of his shooting is from behind the line. Lions threw a fake on him, dribbled away, so one and one for him at the free throw line. The Tigers will be nine and three with the victory. Furman will fall for the first time and be 12 and one. Lions misses the free throw. And LSU will just walk this one out. You see LSU's next five games, December 28th against Louisiana Monroe. We'll have that one for you right here. And then they get a nice little break. Week plus off before they jump into SEC play against Alabama. Well, it wasn't quite wire to wire today for LSU. Furman had a 5-4 lead, but for the most part, the LSU Tigers were in control of this game. And they really cranked it up in the second half. Had a little bit of a lull at the end of the first half. Furman took advantage of it, but too much athleticism and too much pressure in the second half for the Tigers who put away the Paladins, give them their first loss of the season. Now back-to-back, -back, really nice wins for Will Wade. One in Vegas over St. Mary's and then tonight at home against a top 25 ranked Furman team. LSU tonight shot 55% for the third time this year. Skyler Mays with 16 points and Tremont Waters with 20. 75-57 the final as LSU goes to 9-3. and three. So that's the story from Baton Rouge. For Victor Howell, I'm Lynn Rollins saying so long from Louisiana's capital where the final score is LSU 75, Furman 57. To watch this entire game on replay, as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. Merry Christmas, everybody. Have a great holiday season. This has been a presentation of ESPN.